As a beginner violinist, you might be overwhelmed with the sheer amount of information that is out there. But don't worry, in today's video, we're going to be breaking down what you need and what it takes to become a professional violinist from a beginner standpoint. Your first most important step is to find a good violin. And you wanna take a look at your budget based on your skill level. If you are a beginner violinist, you don't need to spend thousands of dollars just for you to get a good violin. There are plenty of good options out there for beginner violinists to get a good, decent sounding instrument from the very beginning. When you are looking for a violin, make sure to look at the craftsmanship and the quality of the instrument. You definitely don't want to get something from eBay. A lot of the more expensive violins out there are usually played by soloists. So if you're trying to buy a violin on eBay thinking that you're going to get rich by selling it at an auction, it's very unlikely for that to happen. There are some rare cases where a violin is found in a drawer that hasn't been used in like 100 years. That's very rare, but I can assure you that do not buy a violin off eBay unless you know who the seller is and you know if the person is reputable for selling that kind of equipment online. There are a few shops that I recommend for purchasing instruments and I'm gonna leave a link down below for you to click on to take a look at. The next most important tool that you wanna consider when learning the violin from beginner to pro is having a good violin bow. Now, a bow is really crucial because a bow helps you create the sound out of a violin. Without a bow, the violin cannot make beautiful sounds unless you pluck it. So I recommend having a violin bow that is between 60 and 62 grams. Anything below is not gonna create a really nice loud sound. And something above that, we're heading into viola territory and around the 62, 63, 64 grams, you wanna make sure that it's not above that because it does get really heavy for a beginner violinist. This is important because you may experience fatigue while you play, and if you experience fatigue, then the behavior towards practice is that you get tired, you're not inspired, and that's not what I want for you. I want you to have the best experience possible by having a good bow that is lightweight and can create a nice, beautiful sound for yourself. Just like the violin, make sure that you are choosing a bow that is within your price range and your skill level. There's no need to spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars if you are a beginner violinist. I do recommend maybe a bow between $100 and $200, just so you get your foot in the door for having a, a good quality beginner bow. The next important step in your violin journey is to have a good violin teacher. Now, I'm not saying to get a violin teacher that can, you know, that has played the violin as an amateur. You want to get a good violin teacher because they are going to help you get the right intonation, to get the right posture, to get the right bow hold and little cricks and crannies that you may overlook. So you want to go to a professional violin teacher in your area to get the best education possible because it may help you down the line for you to have a very good start and have a good foundational start. At this moment, you have a good violin, you have a good violin bow, you have a great violin teacher in your area. Now let's talk about how beginner violinists can get to that really high professional level. The most important thing to understand about violin is that you need to be patient with the violin because you are going to experience some struggles, especially when it comes to intonation. Intonation is when we are trying to hit a specific note on the violin and we want that specific note to be in tune. You will discuss this with your teacher in your area on what intonation is and how you can improve your intonation. One of those methods is just using a scale book. And again, I'm gonna leave a link to my favorite scale book for beginners down in the link below. Good intonation is key because that's gonna help establish the resonance and the overall tone of your violin. And the violin bow is going to help establish a good sound. So you, a nice projecting sound. Once you have the left hand taken care of, then the violin bow is going to help project the resonance. Because volume and projection and resonance, those are different things 
to different people. So for me, I definitely think volume and resonance are two separate things because resonance can help you project the violin to the end of a concert hall, while volume of a violin just means you need more decibels, you need louder decibels just to get more sound out of your instrument. But once you combine the resonance and the volume, then you have a match made in heaven. That means you can really get the most out of your instrument. Something you might want to consider when getting your violin and your bow and you're discussing different violin accessories with your violin teacher is to get a good set of strings. You don't want to get strings that are 18 to $20 for a set because those are cheaply made and they're meant for like the, the little young violin beginners but if you're in you know if you're not so young or if you're an adult beginner i recommend a violin set that is between 30 and 60 dollars and the reason for that is because you have more overtones that the strings provide for you something that we've talked about earlier just a moment ago is the resonance well different strings can provide more resonance or less resonance they can provide more volume and different types of colors and that's a very nuanced thing that professional violinists look for when they are playing on very expensive instruments. In my philosophy, why not get a head start with the strings that you will be playing on? Because it's not just about the sound of the strings, but also the feel of the strings. Some strings are coated differently with different metals. So that is a tiny detail that can help you down the line to becoming successful and for you to achieve pro level status. Another reason why I want you to consider strings between $30 and $60 for a set is because of the tension of the strings. Sometimes there are different tension strings like medium tension, high tension, low tension. In my view, I feel like a medium tension string may be very good and it might be a good fit for you because you're not going to have to press down so hard you're not going to have to press or use a lot of weight on the bow arm to create a loud sound or any kind of sound. That is something that I thought about going from a beginner to a professional violinist is the quality of the string, what brand of strings I am playing on because that has helped me shape my overall decision when I'm performing a solo concert or when I'm performing a chamber music concert or an orchestra concert. Each string has different qualities to them that can help in a specific setting. However, I don't want to play an orchestral string in a solo setting because if I'm playing a solo, I want as much projection and resonance as possible. So at that point, I might be looking at strings over $100, which may not be the case for you right now, but it's something to experiment. If you want to experiment with $100 strings, I recommend some strings down with some links below for you to take a look at. Other things professional violinists that beginner violinists often overlook is rehearing their violin bow. Parents who buy violin bows or violins for the first time and they're not musicians don't really understand this concept. So it's more like getting an oil change for your car. You know, you kind of have to do some maintenance on it. And same with the violin bow. Sometimes the bow hair gets really old. You might experience some gunk. You might see some some uh, gooeyness at the frog or at the tip, that is a clear indication for you to change the bow hair on your bow. Because a fresh bow hair is gonna provide a clean sound. You might experience this graininess to the sound. From, that happens from having old bow hair. And also the quality of the bow hair matters also. For me, when I go to a violin shop, I usually request Mongolian horsehair. To me, that is the highest quality that I know of to get the best sound out of my instrument. And professional violinists really have a designated bow rehair person and a bow person. And other violinists have a specific violin luthier that they want to go to in terms of getting a good um, fix or an adjustment for sound. You want to have a good team around you so you know where to go when you have problems. You could always go to a local music shop that is like general, but 
they're not going to be solving problems the way like a specific luthier or a bow maker can solve for you. They have worked tirelessly in craft, in violin making school and bow making school to answer these questions. Yes, you might be paying a little bit of a premium for the quality, but the quality is worth it. You're going to have a much better violin journey and your experience with the violin will be much smoother by doing these steps. If you're looking for more violin tutorials and violin tips, my name is Eric and I'm a violinist. If you made it to the end of the video, it would mean the world to me to subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification so that you get notified for when new violin content comes out. Helps the channel out to create more violin content and other music related content for you. As I said, I do a lot of violin tutorials. So check out this playlist right over here for you to take a look at some beginner violin tutorials